Alright then gang, so now we've seen how we can use actions to perform asynchronous code What I'd like to do now is replace this set timeout with some Firebase code so we can interact with the Firebase backend Use the email and password that a user has signed up with that they've put into the form And we're going to use that to sign that user up with an account to our application Alright, so the first thing we need to do is import a few things at the top So I'm going to do a comment to say Firebase imports and we need to import, first of all, this auth object right here that we export from the config file. Because every time we interact with Firebase auth, we need to use this auth object. So let me import that. Import, and then in curly braces, auth from, and then we want to come out of this folder. So double dot forward slash, then into the Firebase folder, then the config file. All right, the next thing we need is a function from the Firebase auth package that we use to sign a user up with an email and a password, and that is a long ass function. Let me show you. Import, and then I'm gonna do this on a new line because it is so long. Create user with email and password, like so. So that is the function, my friends, that we use to sign up a new user with Firebase. And this comes from Firebase forward slash app. So when we use this function, we pass in as two arguments, the email and the password, right? That then sends out a request to the Firebase backend to sign up that user. It does a bit of validation, first of all, to make sure that user's not already been taken or that the password is long enough, that kind of jazz. And if there is a problem, it sends us that error back. But if there's no problem, it signs up the user for us, all right? So then, let's come down here and instead of this junk where we have the set timeout let us now sign up that new user so what i'm going to do is use that function and in fact i'm not going to write it all out again because i really cannot be bothered and i'm going to paste in right here create user with email and password now before i do this i want to do one more thing i want to make this an asynchronous function because we're going to use the await keyword inside it and i can do that with an action they can be asynchronous I can just say async in front of it like this. And now I can use await inside here. So I can say await right before this. So then it waits for this asynchronous task to complete before moving on down here in the code. So we need to pass in the email and the password as arguments into this function. But first of all, as the first argument, we pass in the auth object. That's this thing right here. And that way Firebase knows that it's using our authentication service for our project, okay? So as a second argument is the email, which we take in on the payload object. And as a third argument is the password. All right, so we wait for this to complete, then we can carry on. Now this sends back a response which we can store in a constant and that's what I'm going to do Const response is equal to a wait and then this so we wait right here until this is complete And then whatever it sends back to us we store in the response object, okay? Now if it was fine, then we're gonna get a response object if the network connection was bad Then we won't get a response object So what we need to do is check if we have a response object, right? So if we do, then what we can do is go ahead and just commit a mutation, set the user. So let's say context dot commit, and we want to commit set user. Now the payload is going to be the user object, and the user object is on the response object. So when we successfully sign up a user, it sends us back the response, and on that is a user object with information about the user. So I'm just gonna pass in response.user as the payload. And then inside this mutation, we say the state.user is equal to the payload, which is that user object, all right? Now, if we don't get a response object, it possibly means the network connection is bad. So what we're gonna do is throw an error. So we're gonna say throw new error, like so, and we'll pass in an error message which is could not complete sign up. So this is if we don't get a response back at all. Now, Firebase is automatically gonna throw an error for us if there's a problem with their email or password, but this is if we don't get a response object, then we throw our own custom error. And then we can handle these errors inside the sign up component, all right? But if everything's fine, then after we've done this, we're just committing a mutation to update the state right here. All right. 
So then that's the action pretty much complete. All we have to do now is go into the sign up component and we want to dispatch the action and see if it works. Now we already actually dispatched the action right here. So that's fine. But what I want to do is handle the error as well. Now there's two things I want to do. First of all, I want to make this into an asynchronous function and that's so we can use await inside it because I want to await this thing right here in a second. First of all, let me cut that and we're going to use a try catch block just so we can catch the error if there is one. Remember, we throw the error inside the action if there's no response right here. So we want to be able to catch that error inside here if something goes wrong. Also, if something is wrong with the email or password, Firebase automatically throws the error. We want to catch that as well so we can display it to the user. OK, so the thing that we're going to try is the thing I just cut. So I'm going to paste that in right here. And we needed async so I could place a wait in front of this. And I can do that because this is an asynchronous function over here. We say async. All right, so I can await that. And then once it's done, then I want to redirect the user. Because otherwise, once they sign up, they're just going to still sit on the sign up page. I don't want that to happen. If they sign up and everything's fine, then I want to redirect the user to the home page once they've signed up. So in order to do this, we need to import a function from the view router. So that's called use router like so from view hyphen router. And we're going to use this so we can redirect the user down here. First of all, we grab the router by saying const router is equal to use router and invoking that. And then down here, after we dispatch this, then we want to redirect them. So I'm going to say router dot push. And then where do we want to go to? Just forward slash, which is the home page. Now, if there's an error, what I'd like to do is show that to the user. So I'm actually going to create a ref for the error. So const error is equal to a ref. And to begin with, it's going to be null. However, if we get an error, we'll take that error ref and update the value to equal whatever the error message is. OK. All right then. So now we can output the error if we return it right here, like so, in the form. So I'll do a div. And in here, we'll output the error in curly braces. But we only want to do this if we have the error. So I'll say v if error. So for as long as error is null, then this won't show. But the minute we have an error, then it's going to show in the template. OK. All right then. So now let's give this a whirl. So before we try this, I'm in the Firebase backend. I've gone to authentication and I'm going to click on users and we can see we have no users for our project yet. But now I'm going to go to the sign up component and then I'm going to sign up with a new user, Mario at netninja.dev, right? And then test one, two, three, four, five. Then I'm going to sign up. So we can see right here, object is not a function. OK, something's going wrong. So let's take a look at the code. And stupidly, what I did is import this function right here from Firebase app when it should be Firebase forward slash auth. So that was the problem we were having. But also, while we're here, I also want to go into the home view. Uh, remember, we have this store and we log out the store user and then we commit something right here. I don't want to do this commit right here because that's basically just going to update the user every time this view component renders, right? So we don't want to do that. So I've taken out that. And now let's give this a whirl in the browser again. All right, then. So let's say Mario at netninja.dev and then test one, two, three, four, five for the password, sign up, sign up action. And then we can see the user state changed right here. We have this new user object. And on that is information about the user, including the email we just signed up with. So now this is working. This is now updating the state in our store. 